We are all masters. We are all masters. I was moved to put in my two cents on somebody's Facebook post. She said, uh, should I end a relationship because I have spiritual aspirations and my partner doesn't? I've seen this sort of post several times lately and it brought me to mind something my shaman teacher was trying to pound in my furry little head years ago. If you are incarnated here on this planet, then you are already a master. I tossed that back and forth in my feeble brain for years until one day I realized that I was being taught by a seven-year-old and shortly after someone I had classified as a, quote, jock and completely non-spiritual. The crux of the matter is that however a person shows up to us, they are a reflection of our own judgments and conclusions, our own separation anxieties, fixed ideas, and values. We tend to overlook the fact that they are having a similar experience down here on the streets as I am, and even if they haven't been paying attention to the same things I have, doesn't mean they don't have something to teach me. My good friend and cosmic town crier Bashar talks about this, about people being afraid or ashamed of being incarnated down here on Earth. We have heard many individuals on your planet talk about the idea of incarnating on Earth as if you were in some kind of lower class, some kind of kindergarten. I tell you this is far from the truth. Because of the degree of transformation required, this is a master class. And all of you were strong enough to choose this, so please never think less of yourselves by being incarnated on earth you are teaching many beings throughout the cosmos throughout different dimensions how to transform limitation into freedom you are a master class and we thank you for the strength that you are exhibiting in choosing to be on earth at this time of transformation science is now coming to some understandings about how the brain and mind work together and the complexity and multidimensionality of it boggles the mind Research has revealed brain geometries that can only be mathematically expressed in 10 or more dimensions, and that the mind interfaces with the brain from another non-3D dimension. All this multidimensional positioning can certainly create an existential crisis, even in the most stable of us. Overlay cultural programming, social mores, and family values, and it's a wonder that we all aren't wide-eyed, babbling, slobbering idiots. Although I do feel like that sometimes, for sure. Back to the original concern about a partner being spiritual, quote, quote, or not. It's really the wrong question. It's more accurate to ask, is this person generative? Do we contribute and expand each other? Now, what that looks like may or may not be spiritual in the mundane sense. Yet keep in mind that appearances are moot when it comes to spiritual development and that development can be stimulated by anything. A handicapped person, a prom queen, a dog, a bird, a flower, a rock, a sunset. It's what we mirror to ourselves that creates the experience of spiritual expansion. The key is to be mindful of what we are mirroring and projecting. Let it show us unconscious patterns and undeveloped perceptions. In this way, our time on Planet Rock here can reap some true rewards only attainable by us earthly masters. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com